we go. How you doing? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Victory Church. We have, uh, I was going to say we have a great service in store for you today, but we don't. God does. God has a great, store, a great service in store for all of us today, and, uh, and it's going to be great. Um, I don't know, I guess it was last week or two weeks ago, some, on a Wednesday night, Pastor Paul uh, started the service, and he was saying stuff like, uh, you know, if you haven't raised your hands during worship, this is a good night to start doing that. If you haven't done this, this is a good night to start doing that. Uh, things like that. And it started me to thinking about some things. So I'm going to read you a, a little Bible story. It's not too long, but it's from Matthew chapter 14, starting with verse 22. It says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side where he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But then he saw the wind was boisterous, and he was afraid, and, be and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said, Oh, you have little faith, what did you doubt? And when he got into the boat, the wind ceased. Okay, keep that story in mind for a second. When you're reading the Bible, whenever you see the word praise, the original Hebrew words, there's a collection of them. There's several different words for praise, and they all have specific meaning. They all have, they're all all have their own unique characteristics. Uh, one of those words, though, is really special. It's tehillah. And, uh, and that is sung praise. You'll hear it say, oh, tehillah is the singing of praise. But it's more specific than that. It's singing a new song out of your heart, not a song that's already been written by somebody. Um, of all the different types of praise, this is the only one where the Bible says God inhabits that tehillah. God inhabits that sung praise of a new song and I'm talking about actually singing out loud a new song that's never been written before because you're all songwriters um, and so uh, I say you're all songwriters because we all have the ability to do it just like Peter had the ability to get out of that boat and walk on the water because Jesus commanded it Jesus will never command you to do something without giving you everything you need to do it right well, Psalm 96, point, 96 verse 1 says, Sing a new song unto the Lord. There's your command. So we've, give, we've been given a command. It might be scary, but there it is. So as we enter into worship today, I want to challenge you to step out of the boat. And uh, we're going to be doing some cool songs today, and that's fine and good. Use that as masking noise if it'll make you feel better. And sing your own song to God while you're doing that. I'm telling you, this will, this will really change everything for you. Um, and you don't have to be concerned. Uh, you know, if, you're not a, if, if you don't think you're a good singer, don't worry about it. God thinks you're a good singer and you're singing for him. Uh, if you don't think your song is pretty, well, that doesn't matter. It's not for you, it's for God. And he wants you to do it. Um, and the more you do this, the more comfortable you'll be with it. And it will absolutely supercharge your entire life. So thinking about Peter getting out of the boat, one thing that kind of strikes me every time I read that story is if you want to go someplace you've never gone, you've got to do something you've never done, right? If you want your spiritual life to go somewhere it's never gone yet, you've got to do something that you've never done. Um, it's real easy to get comfortable in the boat, but there's so much more out there that God has for you. So hopefully somebody else will get as much out of that as I have. Um, but if you have never sang your own song to God before, this is the perfect morning to start doing that. Um, you will find that God will bless you for that. And that's, the Bible says God himself will sit enthroned on that praise. That's pretty cool. Amen. So if you'll stand with me, we're going to come before God. We're going to lay our lives down. We're going to get rid of any distractions we might have. And we're going to focus on the one important thing, and that's God. God, thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to worship you today. Thank you for giving us another 
another day in which to, to praise your name. Thank you for giving us uh, a place where we can assemble in a family that loves each other to come together and raise one voice to you. God, thank you that you love us so much that you want to be with us. God, we want to be with you. And so this morning, we're going to sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. We're going to sing a new song to you, God, so that you can sit enthroned and inhabit that praise. God, we ask you to help us to step out and do that because that's what you want for us. And it'll, it's so good. It's so good to, to, to worship you in all the different ways. And so we're here to do that today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah.
new song, I'm gonna introduce to you. And it simply says, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. Pastor said, faith is substance and faith is, we're gonna sing it again till you get it. Faith is, and faith is, I'm telling you that I am living Come on. in the evidence Woo. of his goodness. I've seen a move. Hey, I've seen a move. Come on now. I'm living in the evidence. I've never been begging for seed or bread. I've seen the evidence. I'm living in his evidence. Hey, I'm living in his evidence. Hey, I'm living in his evidence. Hey, I'm living in his evidence. 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 I'm living in his Sing it again. I'm living in his evidence. 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 I see the evidence of your good. Come on. All over my life. All over my life I see your promises in fulfillment All over my life oh, yeah, yeah. All over my life I see the evidence of your goodness All over my life
come on, that was your, that was your, that was your time right there to give him some praise. That was your opportunity to thank him. That was your opportunity to give him glory. Father, we've seen it. But the promise still stands. You ain't finished with me yet, yo. Sing this? Can we sing this? Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Hey. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Come on, say with my life. My life lay down the surrender. I give you, give you Hey, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running out, running out, running out. Your goodness, your goodness is running out, running out. With my life, with my life, laid down, I surrender to you. Hey, I see the evidence of. It's all over my life. It's all over my life. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. All over my life. I see your promises in the Somebody, somebody just sing a new song to him like Brandy was talking about this morning. Come on, just raise up a, a loud voice in this place. Raise your voice in this house and give him glory. Sing a new song to the Father. Bless you, Lord. 
Sing a new song to the God Almighty. Lift your name up, Lord, your word. Yeah. You've been so good, I can't explain it. You've been so good, I can't fathom it, God. Your thoughts are so much greater. I could never explain you, God, even if I tried. Your ways are so much higher. Your thoughts are so much greater. I couldn't even explain you, even if I tried, God. Oh, these hands were made to worship. This mouth was made to give yeah. you glory. I'll raise my eyes to the heavens, God. That's the only way I can explain you. I'll lift my hands to give you glory. I'll open my mouth to give you praise. I'll raise my eyes to the heavens. That's the only way I can explain you. I'll lift my hands to give you glory. I'll open my mouth to give you praise. I lift my eyes to the heavens. That's the only way I can explain you, God. That's the only way I can explain you. You're just that good. <laughs> You're just that good. You're just that good. You're just that amazing. could never explain you with my words. Hey. You're just that amazing. I could never explain you with just my words. But I give you all of me. Take all of me. I give you all of me, take all of me, God, I give you all of me, take all of me, I give you all of me, just take all of me, God, I give you all of me, just take all of me, I give you all of me. Take all of me. Come on, this is just my prayer time. I give you all of me. Yes, Lord. Just take all. You can join in if you want to. Yes, Lord. I give you all of me. All of me. Just take all of me. I give you all of me. Just take all of me. I give you all of me. Just take all of me, Lord. I give you all of me. Just take all of me. I give you all of me. Just take all of me. I give you all of me. 
just one thing for me Take all of me Nothing else will do So take all of me Come on, sing your song to him now, come on We ask for revival, but revival is already here. It's in you. Just open up your mouths and revival will start to speak out. This worship is just not for us. Our prayers are just not for us. But it's for that underground church in China that can't, that can't raise a voice. That have to whisper in the middle of the night. That have to bring in just pieces of the Bible. Oh, come on. This is for them. Your shout. Your voice. Come on. This is for the believers that can't raise their voice. Father, we adore Spreading your word, God. This is not for us. This is for the ones, God, that can raise their voice. Hey.
is impossible. Come on, sing this with us.
heavens are telling Earth How great you are Yes, God I'm just responding Oceans are rising, rising and falling at your word. I'm still just responding to your love. How great, how great you are. How great, how great. My God, my God, my God, how great you are, how great, how great you are. Say it with me, my God, my God, how great you are, my great, how great you are. Say it with me, my God, everybody. My God, God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Everyone in the auditorium, say these words. My God. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, my God, how great you are, how great, how great you are. My God, how great you are, how great, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great. this morning. Would you shake hands with somebody? Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord this morning.
Good morning, Victory Church. How's everybody doing this morning? It's good seeing all of you. You look great. You sound great. It's good. It's good. You, you, you guys excited about being here this morning? It's a good day for church. It's a good day for church. Um, you guys like the little remodeling around here a little bit? Um, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> you missed the wall. I, I wouldn't mess with the uh, little machine, though. It's a little wobbly. Yeah. Um, a little bit. It's a little dangerous. It kind of scoots back and forth really hard. Uh, <laughs> I got a few announcements for you guys this morning. I'm excited yes, uh, just to share a few things. Um, um, I love the bulletin today. God is for you. Yes, Grab a bulletin if you don't have one. Um, it has a lot of great things in it. Um, but the first thing we're going to start off with is Revolution Camp. How many, who's excited about Revolution Camp? Amen, amen, amen. We are um, a little bit over a month away. Um, super <laughs> excited. There is a ton. Uh, 33 days is what Ashley just told me. So um, there is a ton to do still. Um, we have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we need your help. Um, something just right off the bat is we are packing the pantry. Um, there's a list on the bulletin, uh, but we also have is this uh, sign right here by the door. It has little sticky notes. Um, and what we've done is uh, each sticky note is basically the one item we need. So it's not just like a generic thing. Like um, if we need five packs of solo cups, there'd be five sticky notes. So just grab one. If you want to support, you can grab one. Um, or all of them, um, but you have to bring it back so we know what to get, right? Um, but you can support us that way. Um, we're going to have uh, um, work days coming here really, really soon. Um, we'll let you guys know, but we need help in that area. I mean, you don't have to just support us uh, by, you know, coming to camp and hanging out with us. You can. We want you to. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but our, our days where we're working, we're building things, we need uh, all hands on deck. We need uh, uh, men and women that um, can can build stuff, you know, or pick stuff up, um, but not campers. And so, um, sorry, one day, one day. Uh, so we need your help. We're super excited about camp. Um, uh, we need volunteers, uh, not just to help build stuff. We need volunteers for camp. Uh, we need help. Um, and so join us with that. Uh, God's going to do amazing things this summer, and I just can't wait. Um, it's going to be awesome. Um, for our youth, we're having a, um, we're going to Hawaiian Falls on the 26th. Um, we shared that with the youth. We're getting them more information here shortly. I've uh, been working on a few things and and uh, on the the back end to um, make sure it all goes smoothly. But we're going to Hawaiian Falls on the 26th, parents, just so you guys know. Um, um, CLST is still going on. Starts next week. What's the name of the new class? Shy. Wisdom to create wealth. Wisdom to create wealth. That sounds awesome. Sign up. Sign up. <laughs> we need, we, I think we all need a little bit of that. Um, but if you want to uh, get a little bit of that and get your theology degree, you can sign up for Christian Life School Theology. Amen. It's going to be amazing. Um, um, that's kind of all the, um, um, the announcements that I have this morning. We have a lot going on this summer, right? Um, we're going to be rolling into camp. Uh, right after camp, we'll have... Um, um, the convo, convo coming up a couple weeks after. That's always a lot of work. Uh, we're doing a lot of work around the building, getting ready for camp. Um, so it's kind of all hands on deck as we go into summertime. So uh, be a part of that. Uh, be part of this ministry um, that we're doing um, and be blessed for it. Amen. Um, I think Pastor has a few things to say about offering this morning. So Amen. give it to Pastor. Praise the Lord. How's everybody doing this morning? You're looking good. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, have you lost weight? Go ahead. <laughs> You're looking good as you possibly can. Amen. You're doing well, looking good. Things are good. You know, God wants you to be saved spiritually. He wants you to be saved emotionally, physically. And um, praise, the Bible says, makes you good looking. Well, now that's my take on it. It says in the King James Version, it says praise looks comely. <clears throat> And if you look that word up, it means good looking. <clears throat> you look better when you're praising God than when you're not. Amen. And uh, so praise the Lord for that. But you, you, you look happy this morning. You look healed, healthy, whole, well, all of those things. God's good. He's still alive. 
I said, he's still alive, so you're okay, amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. This morning, we have a great opportunity to give. And uh, giving is, uh, is a vital part of the Christian walk with, of faith. Everything that we do is by faith. That's right. Everything that we do in this Christian life is by faith. There's not a single thing that you, you can't get saved without it. That's right. Amen. That's right. Everybody says, no, I'm saved by grace. Yeah, through faith. It's faith first and then grace. So everything comes through faith. Salvation comes through faith. Physical healing comes through faith. Emotional healing, relationships restored, all of it comes through faith. And contrary to popular belief, faith doesn't mean I'm just hoping that something happens when it looks like nothing's happening. That's, that's not faith. Faith means if God wor God's word says a thing, then you can stand firm on it even in the face of insurmountable odds. Amen. Amen. So a lot of people have... Uh, hang-ups when it comes to faith you know they most people they're okay with uh, saving faith they understand that because you come to God and you go okay I've got nothing I can't save myself I might as well just throw myself on the mercy of God that's fine and good but when it comes to the rest of our lives after salvation normal day-to-day -day life then we can't just throw ourselves on the mercy of God because we're the ones in control of our health. We're the ones in control of our finances. We're the ones in control of our relationships. On, we're the ones on. that's in control. And the problem is that's not faith. Come on. And uh, faith is evidence, as Reggie said earlier, and it is substance. And so it has to be God's word. Nothing else is sub substantive. Nothing else is evidence other than right. God's word. We don't have anything but his word to stand on. So... When God tells us in his word that we are saved by the blood of Jesus and confessing with our mouth, it results in salvation, so does everything else in the kingdom of God. In fact, Hebrews 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's right. And those that come to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. So everything about our Christian walk is with faith. So it is in our finances. My understanding, I learned when I was a little boy, that um, if I would give what's right, if I would do what God said, God would, God would take care of the rest. And I've given ever since I've been a little bitty boy. I've told you this story. For those of you who've been around, I've told you this story that I'm about to tell again many times. I was six years old. I'd work with my dad all day one Saturday. He gave me $5 for working for him. We went to the dump, dumped all the trees and limbs and trash and everything that we'd collected off the church property. And um, on the way home, he said, I'm going to stop at Fred's. That's a convenience store. We didn't have 7-Eleven. We lived so far out in the country, you couldn't see country from where we lived. But anyway, um, we'd, we, we were going to stop at Fred's, and I was like, oh, thank God. He's got bubble gum. He's got Coca-Cola, blah, blah, blah. So I was just about to jump out of the truck. Daddy stopped me. He grabbed me. He said, son, I want to tell you something. Fifty cents of that $5 bill belongs to God. And I remember as a little six-year-old boy going, God didn't cut those tree limbs down. God didn't load that trailer up. Six years old. And I was already thinking that rebellious garbage against God. Stuff's bound up in our hearts from birth. Did you know that? And I'll never forget it as long as I live. I cried. I was like, 50 cents. I had never even seen 50. I thought $5 was $5 million. So I thought I was going to live off that the rest of my life. Little did I know. <clears throat> so I went in there to Fred. I said, Mr. Fred, I need change. He said, change he said yeah. I said yeah because I got to give 50 cents to God and I got to give it to him first before I buy anything else he gave me my 50 cents I put it in my pocket and I said now can I have some bubble gum and a coke and did you know I've never lacked bubble gum and coke from that day till this Amen. Amen. I drank a coca-cola yesterday I wasn't happy about paying the $2.39 for it, but I drank one. And I got another one, too, because I thought, I'm going to get my $2.39 worth. <laughs> but I learned a long time ago to give what's right, and God does what's right. right. 
So this morning as you give, know that God's a good God. He's faithful. He's so faithful. Having said that, I want you to help me. I want you to get with me on something. How many of you uh, would love to see... <laughs> to love love to see our parking lot better than it is <clears throat> okay four i'll wait <clears throat> i need 30 grand it and god told me it's in your pocket so <laughs> and mine i'm a giver a lot of people ask me well do you give i said yeah so you give to your church which is yourself I, I said no I give up and out I don't give to myself I give right. to God right. I don't take back part of it for myself it's not how I operate but anyway um, I give and um, I know you do too uh, last week we received a couple hundred dollars I think because I mentioned it last week but I want to get this done and uh, Obviously, uh, 30 grand is not going to do everything we have out there, but it's going to do a whole lot of it. And um, so I uh, just need your help. And uh, if you can stroke a check for 30 grand, do it. Um, if you can stroke it for $1,000 or just $5, or if you can cash at me for, I don't know, 30 grand, that's fine. We'll take it however you get it. You got children's college funds. It doesn't matter. <laughs> however you want to work this out, we're, we're standing with you on this one. <laughs> Amen. But God is faithful, and um, and so I, I want us to do that. I think it would be uh, uh, it would just be an upgrade. Now I know you probably drove in and thought, "Oh my goodness, there's a forest out there." Well, guess what? I can't even get a push mower on that yard. You step into the grass anywhere on this property, the mud covers your shoe. So until we have a couple of days of sunshine, yesterday I thought the guys were the mowers were going to come out and it deluge. I don't know what you got at your house, but we got over an inch of rain out here yesterday morning. It flooded again. So much so that this morning when we drove in early, water still pouring out onto the street off of our property out on the Parker Road. So there's just not anything anybody can do about it. Those big old tractors that mow all this out here, they can't get out to it. It's just impossible. So, um, but, you know, sunny days are coming again, so we'll be just fine. But let's give together. Let's see this happen. Let's see this parking lot thing happen. Let's see the fulfillment, fulfillment of it soon. Uh, I talked to the guy that's going to do it, and uh, he's going he's gonna to help us a lot. He's, uh, he's a good friend of ours, and we've known him for many years, and he's done a lot of work for us. And, um, and so he's going to, I mean, the fact that he's going to do it for the price he said, first of all, is absolutely, I, I appreciate it because I know how much it costs to do concrete work. And uh, especially for parking lots, it has to be a certain thickness and all that kind of stuff. And so he's doing it extremely cheap uh, for what the going rate is right now. Anyway, I said all that to say that uh, I know that God is faithful. And uh, I, honestly, I haven't even given it a second thought. I know this is going to happen. I have no, no qualms in my heart or spirit about this whatsoever. But I just want to put that to you. It, you've got an opportunity to give. And uh, so if you want to do that, just say on there, I'm giving X amount or whatever for, for the parking lot. And uh, we're going we're gonna to get it done. Amen. We're going to get it done. Praise the Lord. Father, we love you this morning. We honor you. We bless you, not just with our mouth, but with our finances, with, our, with, with everything about us, Lord. We, we have faith that you will absolutely do what you say you'll do. We give you praise and honor and glory for your goodness. I thank you for every person in this room, for every faithful giver, for everyone who gives, for everyone who uh, makes an effort in this area. God, I thank you. I thank you for your blessings upon them and what you're doing in them and through them. And Father, your word says that whenever we give and, and whenever we bless you, you rebuke the devourer for our sake. And God, I thank you for that. I thank you, God, that you stand in proxy for me against um, enemies that I can't even see. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your goodness. We'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Praise the Lord.
of the gospel, Hezekiah Walker. That's all right. Amen. What a God. Thank you for being here this morning. God bless you. And I know that uh, you're happy to be here. Amen. Amen. It beats the alternative, right? <clears throat> my daddy used to say, I've said this a lot because I heard my daddy say it. I'd rather be here than anywhere I can think of. I don't want to be in hell, jail, or Russia. <laughs> because when he was a kid, the Cold War was, you know, well, <laughs> my dad was pre-Cold War. <laughs> Amen. Oh, goodness. Russia to, to everybody that age was, oh, scary, scary, scary. Quite honestly... You know, after being there as many times as I've been there and Bishop's been there, still some of it's kind of scary. <laughs> there are places. Um, it's it's uh, interesting, you know, uh, especially when we first started going in there. The You just never knew. You never knew what you were going to get. You never knew what was going to happen. Sometimes you'd go to a hotel. You get to keep your passport. Sometimes you get to surrender it. Uh, um, then you're walking around the streets of uh, Moscow or Kiev or wherever, and you have no papers that say who you are or anything like that. And uh, you wonder, well, what are they doing in my room while I'm out? <laughs> yeah. And really, there's no question what they were doing. In your, they were in your room. And uh, but anyway, it was just a, it was a lot of fun. And uh, but praise God, I I. Uh, I've, I actually have had nothing but uh, uh, good times over there in Eastern Europe. It's been fun. It's been scary a few times, but I've been scared here too, so yeah. <clears throat> that's nothing. Praise the Lord. You guys alive this morning? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Praise Father, Jesus. I thank you this morning. I love you. I honor you, I worship you, I give you glory. Lord, you know my frame, you know what I'm made out of because you made me. And Lord, I ask you to speak through me today. Let the words that I say bless and not harm. Let my words be sweetened with your love and your Holy Spirit. Let it be direct let it be without uh, uh, double meaning or difficult to understand or misunderstood. 
Holy Spirit, I ask you to teach us about Jesus. The only one that can change our lives. I'm asking you, Lord, that word of God speak. Word of God speak. Change my heart. Change my life. Change my mind. Make me. Mold me. The way that you would have. In Jesus' name. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I'm just the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. You are the potter, I'm just the clay, mold me and make me after your will while I am waiting yielded and still Father thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Father You know, the hardest thing for us to do is to be still. It's the most difficult thing for us to do. <clears throat> and even though we sit down in a chair and maybe we don't make very many movements, internally a lot of times there's a restlessness. There's a thought process. There's a, yeah. a series of... Uh, a series of, of phrases and stories and words and life events that replay over and over inside of us. Yeah. And they cause um, internal contention. Yeah. Wow. I don't even know how to describe it, but, um, but I know it very well. It's hard for me to describe it, but I understand it because... It uh, just so happens that I, too, am human, just like you. And so I understand those internal uh, dilemmas that we get ourselves into and replaying. It's like an eight-track tape. I'm still um, young enough to remember eight-track tapes. <clears throat> and uh, um, before that, we had reel-to-reel -reel in our cars. That's not true. I'm kidding. <laughs> Just thought I'd say that. Oh goodness! Wouldn't that be hilarious to have a reel-to-reel -reel recorder in your? Some of you are going reel-to-reel. -reel, what does that mean? Anyway, never mind. But uh, <clears throat> the noise that goes on inside of our heads sometimes drowns out any possibility of us having faith to believe God for anything. And. I've watched it over and over in my life, and I've watched it over and over in the hearts and lives of many people over the years. You know, it occurs to me, um, let's see, what is that scripture? Yeah. Proverbs 23, when you sit to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before you. Put a knife to your throat if you're a glutton. Don't desire his dainties or his deceitful food. Labor not to be rich. Did you know that verse 4, it says labor not, I'm in 23 of Proverbs or verse 4. This has nothing to do with my message. I just thought I'd say this. Labor not to be rich. Did you know that right there would solve 99% of everybody's problem? Yeah. Yeah. Just labor. Yeah. 
because you're going you're gonna to do that anyway. Laboring to be rich is not going to help. If you labor right, you'll be rich. Did you know that if, no matter what your income level is, I, I want you to think about this for a minute. This is a, st this is a statistic. The income level that you have, anybody in this, I don't care what your income level is. Did you know that you're richer than nine-tenths of the world population? Yeah. It's true. And we get all antsy over, oh, no, I need $100 or whatever. And most people in the world have never seen $100, even in their own money. And uh, one time, uh, to, to show how this works, and that I should have brought you a picture. They say it's worth a thousand words. But um, one time I received an offering here at this church. It's been several years ago. And Emmett came to me after he said, Pastor, he said, I got something to show you. He said, I, I don't know what this is. And it was... And actual, it was actual money. It was, and I still have it. Uh, I kept this money. You said you kept church? Yeah, I kept it. I kept every dime of it. It's in my office. You can go look at it. It's $100 million bill. You remember that? Not a million dollar bill. Not a $10 million. A $100 million bill. One, just like you take out a dollar bill, 100 million. I thought, is, what is this? Yeah. So I called the Federal Reserve Bank, and I told them what I had in the serial number. They said, oh, that's real money. I said, wait a minute. Well, it's real money. He said, oh, yeah, that's real money. But in April of 05, that money devalued. I said, well, they said, we can't even give you the uh, amount because the bank defaulted in, because it was in uh, Zimbabwe and the, the rulership had changed and so everything had defaulted. And um, I said, how much is it worth? And they said, well, the day that it was printed, that $100 million bill, the day it was printed was worth 33 American pennies. Wow. And so there's pictures. You can go online and see this. I'm not making this up. There are pictures of, of African men with wheelbarrows, money stacked up as tall, and they were on their way to the grocery store to buy a loaf of bread. Wow. Money stacked four feet high in a wheelbarrow. So we don't understand poverty. No. We don't understand lack. We don't understand having, so we labor to be rich and we're foolish. And the Bible tells us if we do that, it's going to mess us up internally. Now, if you go into Proverbs and read the rest of this chapter, I'm, I'm not going to read all of it, but let me just drop down. Um, labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Yeah. Well, you know, that sounds stupid. That sounds, well, that's crazy. So... Well, we just let everything go and don't, you know, what he's saying is don't rely on it. That's what he's saying, don't rely on it. Will you set your eyes upon that which is not or which doesn't exist? For riches certainly make themselves wings and flies away. Amen? Amen. Like an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire his dainty meats. Verse 7. For as... A man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, the context is, is that man had an idea. His thoughts and his desires were evil. And so, the, uh, so even when you sit down to eat with him, even though he's providing this food for you, his thoughts are evil towards you. As a man thinks in his heart. You know, if you listen to a person talk enough, you'll know what's done on the inside, and you'll know whether or not to hang around them. You'll, you'll know whether or not they've got something good going on. I mean, there's some people I've been around, and every single thing that comes out of their mouth is doubt and worry and fear, and I don't like to be around them. Amen. Uh, I don't like it at all because what it does, it casts 
uh, uh, it casts a shadow over the word of God that's in my heart. And so I have to protect God's word that's in my heart uh, at the expense of everyone else. I'm not going to allow that into my repertoire of thinking. Uh, and the reason is, is because it is detrimental to my physical health. It's detrimental to my mental health, but it is especially detrimental to my spiritual health. Yes. And so, so the, the key here is to, to understand what, you, what your predominant thought is. That's why your life is going the way it's going. Okay. Yeah. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And let me make it equal for everyone. As a woman thinks in her heart, so is she. True. As a person thinks in their heart, so are they. And um, so, so that your predominant thought, you know, there's a lot of people and their thoughts. And I know you're not this kind of person, but you can think, as I'm talking, you're thinking, I know somebody that's like this. Their predominant thoughts are negative. I don't care if, you know, if you, if you beat them with a, a uh, wet noodle, they're still not happy. Yeah. You know, if you, if you, if you, uh, uh, if, if you, no matter what you do, they're just not happy, you know. And uh, it, it, you can't make some people happy. And um, I don't know if you can make anybody happy. You have to make yourself happy if you want to be. And the Apostle Paul said, I think myself happy when he was talking to Agrippa. <laughs> he said, I think myself happy. And I have to think myself happy every day, yeah, amen? Yeah. Uh, people generally don't make me happy. Probably don't make you happy either, do they? <laughs> As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Um, the current universities and studies around the world um, that I've read about you know how true it is I don't know I'm pretty much a Google philosopher uh, but uh, if you uh, if you look it up you'll see that there's a lot of studies about thinking right now the idea is is that the average human on the planet has 6,200 thoughts per day 6,200 thoughts if you have 6,200 thoughts per day, and that's just on a good day, that's on a normal day. What about those days when it's really hectic and you got 20,000? Yeah. And some days maybe it's less hectic and you got three, I don't know. I don't know how they figure this stuff out, but let's just say they're right. You know, for the sake of argument, they say they're right, so we'll agree with them. 6,200 thoughts a day. That means you have to make, usually, when you have a thought, you have to make a decision. Yeah, that's true. So let's say that in those 6,200 thoughts, you've got to make a decision about every one of them. Wow. What happens to us is, especially in this day of mass, mass, mass information, we, we find ourselves in a position of just defense. We're trying to defend ourselves against the onslaught of thoughts. Yeah. <clears throat> That's on top of the stuff you've been thinking since you were a kid that you're struggling with. Come on. Am I making myself yeah. clear? The stuff that's kind of been inside you all along and, and just all of that thought process, that record, uh, that recording that's playing in your mind. I didn't mean to say record. I know that dates me. But uh, <clears throat> that uh, scan disc, that uh, playing over and over in your mind, and um, um, all the TikToks you've memorized and all of that, it's just playing over in your mind for the older crowd. TikTok is a platform that most kids get. Anyway, I, I digress. Um, the, that stuff plays over and over in our minds. And so we grapple with it yeah. over and over and over. And so we have to make a decision. What do I do with the thought? What do you do with it? What do you do with the thought? At some point, you've got to make a decision. Is this thought worthy of me dealing with 
or is this thought not worthy of me dealing with? Now, you can go into Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and following, and you can find out that the Word of God has the answer. So, I mean, I can give you the answer right now. Whatsoever things are good. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. Whatsoever things are worthy of praiseworthy things. Think on these. And then and only then will there be peace in your heart and your mind. So 6,200 thoughts come to you. How much of them are only just? 6,200 thoughts, how many of them are lovely? 6,200 thoughts, how many of them are worthy of praise? 6,200 thoughts, how many of them are God-approved? 6,200 thoughts, how many of them are worth your emotional real estate? And if you don't come to grips with that, your insides will be turned to spaghetti. That's right. And some of you sitting in this room right now, your insides are like spaghetti. Yep. I know that by the Spirit of God. Yes. You have harbored those thoughts and you have continued to take hold of them when the scripture tells us to do the exact opposite. Now I'm going to tell you, in Matthew chapter 6, and mo some of you probably knew I was going to go there just by what I was talking about, but in Matthew chapter 6, it's the, the, the middle portion of what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus starts out telling them, number one, when you pray, do it like this. And don't do it like this. He said, don't, the way you don't pray is to stand on a street corner or stand inside a church house and have some big flowing wonderful thing that you have concocted as a prayer to the Lord. Because when you do that, uh, that's your reward. Uh, and how many of you know um, a reward for prayer, the best reward for prayer is an answer from God, yeah. not an approval from a man. That's right. That's right. I don't really ever remember one time in my life praying and standing there hoping, oh, I wish somebody would pat me on the back yeah. for that. <laughs> the only thing I could think of was, oh, dear God, I need an answer yeah. to that prayer. Yeah. Right? So the approval of man, and of course the analogy here was not, you know, and so we look at it and we go, well, that's ancient history and we don't stand on street corners and pray and all of that kind of stuff. But the, the imagery uh, is for us to understand that, that when we pray, we go before God. We humble ourselves before God and we do it there. And he said that if you'll do that in secret and you really mean it from your heart of hearts, and then Jesus said, God will reward you openly. Then he goes on to the next portion of it, and he said, and also, likewise, when you give. Don't do it so that others can see it. Now, a lot of people say, well, I can never raise my hand and say I'm going to give a certain amount. You know, that, be that as it may. I think that's a clumsy way to receive an offering. I think everybody should just give based on their own Twist your own arm. I'm not twisting your arm to do it, okay? Uh, but that's between you and God. But what he said was, he said, if you do it in such a way that it's seen, and you're doing it for that purpose, then that's the reward you get from that. And he said, if you would do it secretly, not secretly so much, but if you would do it in an unassuming way, God will reward you openly. And so I think that's a good plan to follow. How many of you would say, yes, that's a good plan to follow? So if you're, if you're looking at it, I'm in Matthew chapter 6. And um, uh, let's see here. 
So he talks about giving. He talks about prayer. Then he talks about fasting because fasting was another way that people could see you doing a, some kind of a good work. And then he talks about having treasures in heaven. He talks about uh, us being the light, uh, the light of the world. Here's an interesting concept. Matthew 6, 22, the light of the body is the eye. Yeah. If, you're, if therefore thine eye be single, now, how many of you know you've got two eyes? <laughs> right? But if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. That's talking about focus, is what that's talking about. You know, it takes both of your eyes to get a single picture. It does. Now, um, Nana and I have a similar problem with our eyes. Uh, one side is pretty good, and the other side's a little weird. Uh, I can see up, uh, <laughs> let's see, I can see far off with this eye, <laughs> and on this one, uh, close up. And so for me to get glasses to accommodate that mess makes me nauseous. And so I can't wear glasses because of that. They wanted to do laser surgery on one eye, and I was like, no, I don't think so. That's a little too permanent, and I don't want to be nauseous that long. So I got a pair of glasses that had that type of prescription in it, and they said, try it for, uh, you have to try it for at least two weeks before we can, and I tried it for two weeks and almost had a couple of wrecks, and I was sick the whole time I wore I said, you know what, I'll just take my chances. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to do this. It takes both eyes to focus. You have to have both sides. And if your eye is single, if your eye is focused, then your entire body has light. It says it, it's your, you'll be full of light. But if your eye is evil, your whole body shall be full of darkness. Now, when we hear the word evil, we think nasty, dirty, blah, 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 blah. What he's saying here, if your eye is not focused, so in one sense, I could say, Nana has an evil eye. <laughs> On one side, so do I. It's unfocused. You get the picture here? It says your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? What he's saying here is there is the possibility and the probability that there are things inside of us, somehow thought processes and things that keep us from focusing correctly. And when we don't focus correctly, our whole body is full of darkness. Everything about us is full of darkness. That's the reason people say the stuff. That's why you say the stuff that you say. Because internally, your focus is somewhere besides God's word. Your focus is somewhere besides God. who The word of God tells us clearly Whoever keeps their mind on me, I will keep them in perfect peace. Yeah. But our problem is, is that we are, are so easily distracted and our focus is so easily turned that the torment and the internal spaghetti starts happening. Yeah. Now, let me, let me get to this right quick. He, he talks about putting God's kingdom first. Verse 24 says, no man can serve two masters. And, and so then he says, he'll either hate the one and love the other, or he'll hold to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. Mammon is, uh, is a, a meta, spiritual metaphor. Uh, we would consider it a, a demon oppressive ideology about finances and money and those kinds of things. Then verse 25, he says, therefore, so when he says, therefore, he's talking, that's verse 25, he's talking about in light of the other stuff that I've said here for 24 verses. Therefore, I say to you, ha knowing that the way to give is like this, knowing that the way to pray is like this, knowing that the way to fast is like this, knowing that your treasure should be in heaven, knowing that, your, uh, that the light of the body is the eye, 
knowing that you've got to put the kingdom of God first. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life. That goes against everything that you have ever been taught by a human. Yeah. Well, you're just saying I'm just not, I, I'm just supposed to live by the seat of my pants and not think things through? Have you ever read this verse in the Bible? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, this is a direct command. This is, this is like the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. This is Jesus. This is not, I think this is a good idea. This is Jesus saying, therefore I say to you, don't do this. If I were to give you, and I should have done this too, but I didn't. I was lazy. I should have gotten a bunch of pieces of paper and handed you. If I were to walk out and hand you a piece of paper, let's say I just had this piece of paper here. <clears throat> By the way, it's a tithing envelope, so don't give it back to me empty. But anyway, <laughs> if I was just to give you this piece of paper, hand it to you, and I said, no, nothing's on it, but, and I said, turn it over and read it, and the word death was on it, what would you do with that? Give You'd give it back or throw it on the floor. What if I gave you a piece of paper and it said sickness? Would you look at that and go, oh, okay, I'll keep that? No. Come on, go there. What if I gave you a piece of paper and it said marital trouble, relationships destroyed, spiritual life destroyed? What would you do with that? Come on. You wouldn't take it. Would you? Yes, sir. He said, take no thought about your life. What you will eat. Some of you right now are, it's 1137. All you can think of, when's he quitting? I've got to eat. <laughs> Until all of your stomachs growl. That's when. No, I'm kidding. I'm as hungry as you are. Just hang on. Or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you'll put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than next? What? What does it say? Uh huh. And then he goes on through this story about how that even the birds of the air are fed, they're covered, they're clothed. The grass in the field. God takes care of it. And then he says, are you not much better than they? Now, I'm hoping there's no PETA people here today or environmental tree huggers because humans are worth more than trees. Amen. And the tsetse fly out in California or wherever it is and the bat that's got weird warts on its head, it, humans are worth more than that. <laughs> Everybody, you know, a lot, of, a lot of those people say, well, God created humans last. Yeah, because he prepared everything for us to get here. That's why he created us last. I mean, they don't stop to think, you know, if he'd have created us first, we'd have been treading water for days, <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to breathe, you know. You've been walking along, you know, even if there was some ground, you'd be walking around like, whoa, there's a tree. <laughs> Just come right up. Anyway, I think this weird kind of stuff. <laughs> you just be walking along a flat, that all of a sudden you're on top of Pike's Peak going, wow, how did that happen? Yeah. He said, are you not much better than they? Verse 27, which one of you, which one of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit. I know we don't do a lot of stuff in cubits anymore. It's usually never even a part of my com conversation. But can add an inch to his stature. What about your clothes? That's a huge issue.
for a lot of people. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They, they don't toil. They don't spin. And it's interesting because he says, I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Verse 31, here it is again. Therefore, take no thought, saying, where am I going to get the money to pay the rent? Where am I going to get the money to buy food? Where am I going to get the money to do this? Where... How am I going to be clothed? How am I going to clothe the kids? How am I going to fix this? Verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Now, you're a Gentile, unless some of you are Jewish in here, but you're a Gentile. And basically what it means in Scripture when it says a Gentile, it means a person not in covenant. So you are in covenant. So you don't fit the description of a Gentile here. You are in covenant. What he's saying, after all these things do people outside the covenant seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all the other stuff will be added to you. Take no thought. Don't take it. I'm done. Let's all stand. I'm not through, but I'm just going to quit. Take no thought. Some of you have been grappling. And I know that because of the Spirit of God. You have been wrestling with things. There's internal things that you have been dealing with, things on the inside that, that, are, that are literally frightening you to no end. And in your mind, you're like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm here to tell you this morning, the way around that is, the way through that, the way over that, the way to victory is to don't take it. Drop the piece of paper. Amen. Drop it. Don't allow that to be the predominant thought of your mind because what you're going to do is you're going to continue to uh, keep replaying that garbage and it's going to affect you adversely and it's going to affect the person or the people that are around you. I'm trying to help you this morning. Take no thought. And it's not just about clothes and food and drink and all of those things. It's everything in our lives. Take no thought. Don't accept the thought. Just because 6,200 thoughts come to you a day doesn't mean you have to take them. You don't have to take them. But you can rely on God. You go to Philippians and read that and go, okay, whatsoever things are good, lovely, just, if they're praiseworthy, think on these, okay? When the thoughts come to you, you go, well, that one's not lovely, so I gotta. That cannot be a part of my life in any way. Amen. You've got to be thorough, and you've got to be rude. <laughs> you've got to be resilient. No, that's not a part of it. That's not lovely. It's not just. It's not good. I am not. In, this is not who I am. This is not where I am. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to take this thought. I will not internalize it. I will not allow it to become a part of my, the minutia of my mind and my spirit. I'm not going to allow this garbage to go. Now, every one of you sitting here listening to me right now, you're all saying, I can do this. I understand what you're saying. And that's exactly right. And the Bible says it, and I can do this. There's not a one of you in here that would say to me right now, I can't do that. Because all of you are saying right now, I'm so glad you mentioned that this morning, Pastor, because now I'm going to walk out of here and it's just going to be a breeze. Because now I know that I'm going to reject of the 6,200 thoughts, there's probably only about, you know, 10% of them or less that are any good. And so I'm just going to reject the other 5,000, however many. 
I mean, it's going to be simple, but I'm going to tell you right now, and you know I'm telling you the truth, that the same soundtrack that's been playing over and over in your mind for years, for some of you, it's playing up right now, and you, can bear, you can't even hear me because you have taken the thought, and it's yours. You've accepted it, you've believed it, and it's a soul-damning thing. I don't mean going to hell. I mean, it, it's, it's a damning, damaging thing on the inside. It puts a crater in your psyche, to, to, so to speak. And actually, in your spirit, man. What you've got to do is you've got to learn that that spirit man inside of you has to be built up and it has to be bigger than all the other noise, all the other thoughts that are coming through. And so for those of you, and I know this sounds silly, but those of you this morning and you just got spaghetti on the inside and you know that it's been difficult and you know that your thought processes have led you down all kinds of roads that, like a rabbit hole that you can't get out of and all you can do is think of that. And I can tell you, whenever, whenever you come to the point that you meet this intersection, of you hearing the good news that's in the scripture that Jesus will help you with this stuff and then when you get back to what you call reality then you've got to you've got to decide there's a decision you're going to have to make and you're going to have to say I'm not going down that road again I will not go down but pastor the pain is unbearable I know I'm a human too I don't like pain any more than you do. But even in the face of apparent defeat, I stand and I say, no, no, no. I will not consider. The Bible in Hebrew says that Abraham considered not his own body being dead. And he considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. He knew good and well he was too old to produce a child. And he knew good and well that Sarah was past the age, of, but he did not consider it for a minute. He did not consider it. But what he did consider was God's word to him. And so my challenge to you today is to consider God's word to be more faithful than the garbage that's playing in your mind. Amen. Only, you know, you're the only one that can change that. I'm going to pray with you this morning, believing that God is going to instantly give you a breakthrough. If you believe this morning that that's the case, it will be done for you. John 14, Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. We can sit here and argue over that verse all we want to, but that's what Jesus said. Whatever you ask, I'll do it. That's a good God. So let's just get rid of the spaghetti. I know that sounds goofy, but let's get rid of it. Father, in the name of Jesus, every anxious thought, we reject it. We release it. It's not us. It's not a part of us. We didn't start the soundtrack, but we're ending it right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, for every part that we played that was to our disadvantage, we ask for your mercy and your forgiveness. For everything that we did to cause any of it, God, we fall at your feet. thoughts that continue to form, we reject them in Jesus' name. Every time one comes, we're going to run it through Philippians 4, 6, 7, 8. We're going
going to run it through those verses and say, this thought better be lovely, it better be good, it better be just, it better, or we're, I'm not involved. When your body speaks to you and says, you're going to die, I'm going to say, not today. In the name of Jesus. When your emotions speak to you and say, you're about to get out of control and you're not today. In the name of Jesus. When someone comes at you and there's this vicious attack, not today. Not today. When you want to rise up on the inside, somebody has pushed your button and you want to give them a piece of your mind, you want to tell them the, where to get off and all of that, no, not today. I release that garbage. I'm not, that is a thought that's not worthy of me. Life is too short to live in that garbage. Some of you just need to repent. Some of you just need to say, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm sorry for my thoughts that have caused me to talk the way I've talked to somebody close to me. Some of you need to just repent and say, I'm wrong and I'm not doing that anymore. That would fix 99% of some of your issues. At the same time, after you repent and after you say that, don't do it again. Because repent means don't do it again. It doesn't mean to ask for forgiveness. It means don't do it again. Father, we give you, just like we were singing earlier, it's, God, I thank you. And our worship was so prophetic this morning. I give you all of me, everything about me, I give it all to you, even my thoughts. And I give you my tongue. I give you my life, everything. And I thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, and I thank you, Holy Spirit that you give us the ability to go forward in this. I thank you, Lord, that we're not doing, this is not willpower, but this is Holy Spirit power. Because we're born again, because we're believers, your anointing's on the inside of us. You have given us your power. And so, Father, we thank you for that today. We're going to walk in it in the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give glory to God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you need to speak over your situation. something inside of me the Lord is just prompting me to give you this whatever the situation is that's causing the trauma or the drama you need to speak to it you need to speak directly to that issue now I'm not telling you to be weird <laughs> or anything like that I'm telling you just to speak to that issue and say in the name of Jesus no this is, you're not going any further. Whatever that situation is, I don't know what it is for you, but I know what it is for me. And you have to just, out of your mouth, you need to find a place. You don't have to do it loud or loudly. You don't have, nobody has to hear it but you and God. Sometimes the devil needs to hear you say, no more, get out of my life. Now get out of my wife, get out of my life, <laughs> get out of my life, no more, this is as far as this goes, and you may say, but what if that don't work, well, what if it does, well, I, I, I don't know, well, I've got scripture to back it up, Jesus said, when you pray, not after, but when. So speak to it, and your fig tree will be cursed, your mountain will be moved. You may have to stand your ground. Uh, let me put, let me back up. You will have to stand your ground. 
Because the thought will come back. And I'll promise you this, the symptom will come back. The situation will come back. I guarantee you, the devil won't give up that easily. But you speak to that situation, you speak to it, say, in the name of Jesus, this thing is over. And then allow the Holy Spirit time to do his work. Amen. God bless you guys. Let's say goodbye to the people that are watching this morning on the count of three. One, two, three. God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you. You're dismissed this morning.